Hello everybody and welcome to Solaris. This is the upcoming title from Paradox Interactive. It's a grand strategy space game, uh, similar to the games they've made before like Crusader Kings and Europa Universalis. So I'm extremely excited to be able to play this and they were kind enough to send me a copy a little bit before release on May 9th. Um, so the review embargo goes up then, but I can still play the game now a bit early and show footage of it. Basically though, I'm in love with the game, so I'm going to be streaming it every day for the next couple of weeks on twitch.tv slash darntotalwar. So if you want to directly impact the campaign there, you can go ahead and do that. But I'm also doing this Let's Play, and a Let's Play isn't something I normally do on my channel. It's quite different for me to be doing, and I'm going to rely on you guys to tell me if you like that or not. If you don't like it, I'll stop doing them, but if you do like it, I'll continue the series. Um, and I quite literally mean like the video, dislike it if you don't, let me know. I want to know what you guys think of this format. And uh, I might do more, I might even breach into other games doing it. Um, and I won't, I'll try not to clog up people's feed. I'm just going to post a video a day of Stellaris to keep it consistent until the campaign is over. Not do like tons of Let's Plays or anything like that. So, let's get into it. As you can see from the title of the video, we're playing as the Roman Empire. So this is an alternate history view of the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire never fell. And this is the kind of custom uh, empire that I've built myself. Um, I've kind of pre-made one for the series so that we don't spend too long in the character creation and the, the race creation system. Although I'll go through it. It's immensely deep. So in the appearance section we can pick all of these different races and kind of combine them to create our own race. Uh, then you have names, uh, you know, you want to name your race and stuff like that. Uh, the names that they use for their leaders and things. Traits, the ruler, the home world, what kind of world do they live on, things like that. So it just gets deeper and deeper. The government and ethics system, that even the flag has a <laughs> crazy amount of detail to it. So we're basically though playing it relatively safely, I suppose you could say, by playing as human. But I have actually played two campaigns before this, um, as one as kind of a fox looking nation and one as humans actually as well. Um, so yeah, so we're the Roman Empire, and we're going to be kind of a military-style dictatorship. Um, and that's kind of the Let's Play that I want to do. Um, I think it's a really cool, kind of grounded in reality, but alternate history style of play. And let's just get straight into it, basically. So, we're going to be starting in a spiral galaxy with four arms. Uh, AI empires down to 16, why not? And a uh, large AI empires, or advanced ones, uh, to one. Because I feel like... I have never played Euro uh, Europa or I've never played Crusader Kings either, really. Um, I've only dabbled in them, so I'm not a very good Paradox player, I guess. So I'm going to be sticking it on normal, not having too great of a challenge, um, and we'll just see how we go. I, I'm not going to do Iron Man, but I won't really be reloading any files anyway, just unless it like crashes or something. This is a preview build, but I haven't really had any problems with it up until... Well, I haven't. Anyway, let's just get into it. In the eons since the first primitive human communities took shape on the grassy savannas of Earth, our civilization has spread and prospered. Countless nation-states formed as we advanced through the technological ages, warring against each other until only one remained. Although the fighting was often brutal, those who survived nurtured a martial tradition that has prevailed to this day. Now, after the successful creation of several experimental subspace fields, the finest minds of the Roman Empire have finished development of the first warp drives. The stars themselves are finally within our grasp. So we are the Roman Empire, we are a military dictatorship, and we are led by Gaius Julius Caesar the 23rd. Uh, we'll get to a bit of that in the traits we have a bit later. Let's just get to some gameplay and have a look at this pretty, pretty planet that we live on. So here we have Earth, and you can see that it is actually Earth. It's got Africa, South Africa, or South America, um, Europe, Italy, there's where the humble Roman Empire started. So that's pretty cool. Um, I, it does this when you name your planet Earth and start with a continental world in a spiral galaxy, I believe. It generates our solar system as we know it. Um, so that's that's quite cool, I think, um, that they've given the kind of option for players like me who want to play a little bit more grounded in reality and imagine a world where we actually do take off and uh, venture into the stars. So it's pretty cool that we're able to do that. We can see that Venus, you know, Venus is there, Mars, uh, Mercury, Mercury and Mars, uh, Jupiter, Neptune, and its and its moon Triton, and Saturn's moon Titan. Uh, so it's all there. It's all kind of accurately modeled, um, I guess. Oh, Jupiter looks really good. I wonder, is it, probably, it must have the big red spot somewhere. I uh, probably just can't see it right now, but I'm sure it's there. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Let's take a look at the uh, kind of galaxy that we're in. Right, so next to us we've got Alpha Centauri, Barnard Star, and Hanum Tyr. Uh, we're close to Sirius, but Sirius is just outside our borders. Um, we have our own little borders, and we're next to the Najagas Vale. Um, so we're the Roman Empire, and this is the kind of galaxy that we have to deal with. This is a medium-sized galaxy spiral, 
with 600 stars. So quite a lot to get to. This is our little corner of it. And we're going to have to fight about 16 different nations or, you know, not necessarily fight them, but form alliances and find alien life and so on. So we're kind of in the middle. So what we're probably going to see here is a lot of alien life is going to be crossing through our, our area. If you kind of start out at the edge of a spiral galaxy out here, alien life doesn't really have any reason to go out there. Um, they all want to kind of cross paths to get to their different areas. So we're probably going to find aliens quite quickly. So let's let's get to it. Now while I'm messing around, we'll just do a quick survey of the system with our science ship and that'll auto-generate a path around all the kind of points of interest in this solar system and uh, it'll then highlight anything we can use and we can use a construction ship then to kind of harvest those resources. So let's, oh and let's just do some research before we do that. Um, the research is different every time you play, it gives you, it's kind of like weighted to give you different things. So I think we'll go with this one because this is a faster survey speed which is pretty good I think I have to actually equip that on my science ship so, so I'm not too sure uh, this is sweet we got a colonial uh, colony ship right here so we can research that and down here we can yeah let's get this one 5% minerals and 5% damage we need minerals early on so it's quite good um, so these are our scientists you can research physics society and engineering and there's also a kind of rate at which we can use those um, Engineering research is used to research new technologies. We can increase our output by uh, building engineering facilities. Um, and this output then feeds into this, and that's how it goes up. So it's pretty cool. We can see that it's going to take 45 months, 71, and 48 for these to be finished. Mm -hmm. So while, while that's all now taken care of, let's have a little zoom in on our science ship and play the game. So let her go where she wants to go. Um, I'm going to kind of romanize these names. So we've got a science ship. I'm going to call this... Ptolemy. Makes sense. Uh, construction ship. I'm going to call this Syracuse. Going to name them after kind of cities in Rome, I guess. Um, the first strike force. This is our navy. We're going to call this Classis I Terra Concours. And that kind of means Earth Defenders, I think. Um, and Earth will rename to Terra, because I believe that's what the Romans called it. Um, that's kind of Romanized that for us. Uh, let's rename some of these people. So, let's go with Claudia, Scipio, and we don't have any leaders assigned to him. But the re I noticed that the scientists need uh, to be renamed as well. Uh, where do I do that? So I believe it's down here. Yeah. Okay, so we'll rename her as well. Um, we'll call her Julia. Um, Nepos, I guess. If you've got any suggestions for names, let me know, and then when we get when we hire some new people, um, we can rename them. Uh, let's go with Publius. Uh, Verulus. So I've generated a few names on a website and just wrote and written them down, just so I can remember. Um, Niobe, Aureus. And we only have to do this kind of once for every now and then, so it won't take up too much time, but there's just a few to do in the beginning. Uh, while we're doing that, let's, let's follow our science ship around, see if it's actually finding anything. Our last scientist down here is Juan de la Garia, but we're going to change him to have a Roman name. Marcus Metellius. Sweet. Okay, so we've got our Romans. We're fully Romanized now. Um, so that's pretty cool. So let's see if we found anything. So on Mercury, we found some energy. Let's get our ship to go over here and build a mining station on Mercury. This is our construction ship. So our construction ship is going to head on over to Mercury, uh, build a kind of uh, mining ship in orbit, and then we can then harvest that resource, and it'll just, just like a, a regular strategy game, we'll get the resource from it over time. The other thing worth doing is on Terra, so this is a planet, and we've only one planet, obviously, uh, that's habitable to us. We cannot just colonize any planet. We have to be able to live there. So Mercury is a molten world. We have zero percent habitability on that 
Mars, I'm surprised that that says 0%, but I, I think you can eventually learn to do, like, habitat that if you want. Uh, but down here on the surface, this is where kind of some of the gameplay comes into effect. Um, I'm just going to read it quickly while we're waiting. Build hydroponics farm here. So while that's building, I'll just explain. So each tile has a value attributed with it um, that it's good at doing. So this one's already good at doing food, and it generates food if there's a pop on it. And a pop is just a population, a representation of a population. So this pop is fully grown, and it's harvesting just one food. And this tile will always produce one food. Uh, one food unless we build something on it that we shouldn't. To get the most out of that, then, we could build a farm on it, and it will generate even more food, because it's food on food, so it's better. If we built, for an example, a mining network on it, we would destroy the food there. Um, so that's kind of roughly how it works. We've got a free pop here. We can always just drag her around, put her somewhere else that we want her, but I'm going to keep her there for now, and build another hydroponics farm there. So, our science ship is just... Uh, leveled up, uh, the person, the scientists on it. Now, we're human, so these guys are going to die off uh, when we get to about, you know, 70, 80, 90 years old. And you can see the, um, excuse me, you can see the flow of time up here in the top right. So we're just playing at normal speed right now. We'll speed it up every now and then when we need to. Um, we've built, our construction ship is just about done building. It's all going smoothly. And hopefully I can kind of introduce you to the mechanics of the game over time. Uh, so you don't get too bogged down. I don't want to just lay everything on you at once. Because <clears throat> for those of you who just might want to watch this and not actually play the game for a while, um, it's good to just be able to explain it. Syracuse completed the construction of mining station in orbit around Mercury. Well done, Syracuse. Let's see if we found anything else. So we found some energy over here. So we've got some energy already coming in from Mercury, but we could do it more. Um, and our science ship probably has a lot... Oh, sh wow, it's actually done a bit... Oh, hang on. What is this? That's a bit odd. It's just a floating star of some sort or something. It wouldn't be a star, actually. We're in a star system. That looks like a warp trail to me. But it doesn't say it. Usually it says it if you hover over it. Anyway, um, let's get our construction ship to Venus so we can actually start building some minerals. This is a mineral station. Um, or this can be... We can get minerals here. So here's Venus. I love that it gives you like all the information about the town. A rocky planet with a thick atmosphere that is lethal to all known higher forms of life. So of course, we cannot ever habitat live on Venus, probably, um, because the atmosphere is mostly carbon dioxide, and it's so hot because of a, a runaway greenhouse effect that it basically rains molten metal. Um, so it's not a good place to live, for our species, anyway. Uh, right, so let's have a look at something else so while we're waiting. Let's follow the... Can we build... Actually, can we build this yet? No, we're still a little bit short on credits. We have to wait till the end of the month. So that every at the end of the month, these credits all take over. Um, and this, unfortunately, this is going to cost us 90, and we only have 87. So we just have to wait a little while and keep researching. So while we're doing that, while we're following our ship around, we'll take a look at our government. So we are the Roman Empire, and like I said, we're playing as Gaius Julius Caesar the 23rd, a Grand Marshal. Um, his ruler traits are investor. Gener generally, it's just 10% energy credits. That's pretty good. And 10% minerals. Wow, that's really good. Actually, he's a good ruler. Um, he's only 33, so he's going to be with us for about 60 more years, I could say. Uh, so that's going to be cool. He'll only ever change, or we only ever newly elect someone when he dies. Because we are a military dictatorship, which gives us less ship upkeep and more naval capacity. Um, our governing ethics, we're materialist uh, by design. Um, so we just basically get more physics, society, and engineering output out of our, out of our technologies, which is pretty good. Um, and we're fanatic militarists. Um, so that basically allows us to do more damage in battles. Um, we get more influence from gain having rivalries. So the more kind of factions we declare war on, or to call them rivals, um, and we get happiness during times of war. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and we got our budget here. Don't really I never, I've never really, really paid attention to that. Um, and then we got policies and edicts. So we're not going to use any of this stuff till much later, I don't think. Um, and population. Any help with this stuff would, would be greatly appreciated. I've played a little bit already, and influence is something I find very hard to gain, um, just in general. So people might be able to help me with that. I know you can gain it by getting rivals, but it just seems like quite difficult. Anyway, let's... Oh no, we're already in orbit here, so let's build a construction ship down here, and then we'll har harvest some more minerals. And these minerals will allow us again to, on Terra, <coughs> uh, build more things for our pups. So they're still building the stuff, so that's 120 days, everyone's doing something, so we can just speed up time now. 
let things go a little bit faster. So we're at the fastest speed now. Science ship's working away. System survey complete. And it's just finished exploring the system completely. So if we jump out to this galaxy screen, we can press Alt and we can see that we have engineering research and some stuff available that we haven't actually captured uh, yet or harvested yet. But I think it's time that our science ship goes where no man has bravely gone before and it'll be Julia Nepos that'll take us on our first journey to Alpha Centauri. Um, Alpha Centauri is probably going to be bigger than Bernard Star. Yeah, it seems like it. So we'll go there first, even though it's a little bit further. We'll go here first. Hostile fleet detected. Oh shit, an unidentified object has been detected on a direct course for the Sirius system. That's really interesting. So they're going to Sirius, which is all the way up here, and they might be crossing through our territory. We must have missed them. But they kind of came into our scan range. This is our scan range. So we just kind of detected for a moment a UFO, essentially, not really knowing what it was. And our science ship has arrived in Alpha Centauri, uh, which is also a Class G star. And in these other, uh, we can rename all these if we like. So, as many suggestions as you want below, and we'll complete. just name some of these planets, because um, that'd be quite cool. Then there's like habitable planets. So this one might be habitable for us. It looks like it could be. Um, but we haven't surveyed it yet, and we don't have a colony ship yet, so we can't do that. Uh, we're still quite low on minerals overall, um, but we'll put ourselves in position above this mining ship, um, ab above Ceres, and then we can hopefully drain its resources. Oh wow, looks like Jupiter's moons are quite fruitful. Two minerals from Ganymede, some engineering research from uh, Jupiter itself, and then Callisto has some uh, minerals as well. And there's the big red spot on Jupiter, it's pretty cool. I I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's actually a massive hurricane. That's about the size of like four Earths in diameter. Uh, something like that. It's a giant hurricane that's just going on at the moment. Holy fucking shit, what is this? Our first stumbling steps into the void beyond Terra were not motivate motivated solely by curiosity or a desire to conquer the unknown or a need to leave our mark on the galaxy. The biosphere of Terra has undergone rapid changes in the past few centuries and prominent scientists warn that Terra may be faced with the beginnings of a mass extinction event, that cyclical purging of life that is inseparable from planetary existence in the greater cosmos. A research plan has been put together to study a number of planets re uh, rendered uninhabitable by major astro astronomical incidents or planet-bound catastrophes. We hope that by reconstructing these events, a similar fate may be avoided for Terra and the human race. It falls to you as Grand Marshal of the Roman Empire to ensure that this expedition is carried out. Consult the situation log for details. So this begins the mass extinction through the ages event chain. It doesn't actually say what's going to kill us. I thought it was going to say like our atmosphere, we've polluted it or something like that. But situation log updated. it just seems like they feel like Earth eventually won't be habitable. To avoid a potentially mass extinction uh, apocalypse on Terra, we must study the effects that major calamities have had on other planets. So that's cool. So we're going to have to find... Oh shit, do we know where this is? Anomaly Anas found. Oh my god. Discovery of alien life. The Alas Alas Alacris Jeez, I can't even say this. The Alacrity has made a startling find on Alpha Centauri 1. The planet is teeming with alien life. For the first time in history, we've encountered life forms that did not originate on Terra. This is an amazing discovery. Or, this amazing discovery has silenced those who believed we were alone in the universe. Although none of the alien creatures found on Alpha Centauri are sentient, uh, sentient, it is likely only a matter of time before we encounter ones that are. There are signs of activity by an ancient precursor civilization on this habitable world. So we'll leave that for now. That's an anomaly. We can go check that out later. Right. We're still not able to build above this just yet. So that's fascinating. Um... That's fascinating. So we've got some stuff going on in Alpha Centauri. So this planet has life on it. I want you guys in the comments to come up with a name for this planet. At the moment, it's just called Alpha Centauri 1 because it's the first planet in its system. The Roman Empire is abuzz with news of alien life found by the Al Alacristi. I need to change that name. It's awful. While hardly intelligent by human standards, the fascination... The fascinating beings defy easy classification and hint at the immense complexities and possibilities of the universe. 
That's true. If we ever found life on other planets, we would probably take very long to understand it and how it would operate. So, this is her sign ship, the Alcatri, whatever it's called. That's an awful name. Can I change that name? I'm guessing I can. There we go. Let's just call it the Trireme. <laughs> if you got a better name for that, let me know. At least I can pronounce it. <coughs> Alright, so things are moving. Um, we've got enough to build what we need to down here. On the series. So we'll let them get underway while we're still exploring this galaxy or this uh, solar system. System, I should say. Things are going good. Getting some hints of alien life. I think there she's just about to finish. So Julia Nepos, the first person to ever visit another galaxy, finds or f another system finds uh, finds life on a small planet. This planet looks awesome. A toxic world, a massive toxic world with rings around it. Similar to Venus, but just System bigger. survey complete. Anomaly found. Sensors pick up unexpected activity from an isolated planet on Alpha Centauri 3's A's frozen surface. We have a slightly bigger failure risk on that, so we'll actually leave it. There might be some life on this planet as well, possibly. So we'll head over to this one and research over here. Because our failure risk is only 12%. So we're going to research kind of the precursor civilization that there seems to be uh, signs of. Um, we started, we're harvesting even more from down here. That's great. We're getting a bit thin on energy credits income. Uh, we don't have a pop to do anything with it yet, but there's energy credits down here. So we'll position our construction ship above this, um, above Saturn, and we'll start figuring out how to get that once we get um, some more credits. All right, let's speed things up. So I don't know about you guys, but I love this kind of stuff. <laughs> I love space um, and everything kind of associated with it. I'm just so fascinated by it. So it looks like our guy is done, or a girl, Julia. We've recovered artifacts from an ancient alien civilization on Alpha Centauri. Our scientists think they inhabited this region of stars roughly 6 million years ago, based on the age of the artifacts. Uh, based on the age of ar artifacts. The aliens call themselves the Yut and appear to have been very large and flat arthropod analogues. It seems a single individual could reach a length of a nearly 100 meters as an adult, and it was apparently exceedingly rare for one, for more than two or three yacht to travel abroad in the same star, aboard the same starship. Interesting. Situation log updated. I, was, I actually just said interesting and realized that it actually makes you say interesting. <laughs> it is interesting. Um, so our situation log's been updated, and this is kind of like our journal, and we can track quests. So we can actually find more artifacts for the Yut, um, and then piece together where they came from, what happened. So that's really cool. Right, there's our little fleet doing well, chilling out. Uh, so our Ptolemy, our science ship, not not really doing anything now. Intelligent life taunts with pointed absence reads a popular news net on post on Terra. The people of the Roman Empire are apparently finding some humor in the fact that the lower forms of alien life are now a matter of public record, but potentially equals from other stars continue to elude us. Science officer Julia Nepos's report on the traces found on Alpha Centauri 1 seemingly only add an ironic twist to the situation. It's like, hey, we know that we know that we found a massive civilization possibly, but they're not there right now, so it's like, hmm. Um, so that's kind of cool. I love that it gives you kind of stuff about that. We could we could research the last anomaly on this planet which is over here yeah let's go let's do it we can't really do anything anyway there's no point like exploring the other stars just yet because our construction ship hasn't even finished getting materials in this one yet um, so we can finally build a mining station here well, let's speed things up See what's going on. So our science ship, she's just about to finish on this one. Awesome. Oh, failure. Oh, shame. What was it? 22% or something. She failed. Absolute disgrace. Julia Nepos. Well, I guess she's not all brains after all. 
Alright, let's send her over to... Let's send her to Barnard's star. Ah, uh, let's just go to Hanum tier. It seems closer. Let's survey that system. Having a brief look at it, it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points of interest that might reveal something interesting for us. Our construction ship has just finished building energy on Saturn, so we're getting lots of energy and lots of credits right now, which is great. And we have enough credits already to build another one on Ganymede. Uh, so let's get... Whoops, I'm after telling her to go the wrong way. Sorry. Survey the system again, please. And we'll get the construct construction ship to go over to Ganymede and build a mining station as soon as... Uh, by the time it gets there, it should have the credits to do so. Let's follow the science ship. I love the science ship the most because we just fi find stuff with it. Uh, it looks like we've got a dwarf star here. Often referred to as red dwarfs, their low luminosity means they are difficult to observe with the naked anomaly eye. Found. Found. But the one that most common in the universe. We found another anomaly. An abandoned ship has been left adrift aimlessly above this planet. The massive sails protruding from its hull suggest that it relied on solar power to function. That's awesome. I wish we could see it. I don't think we can. That's pretty cool. Right. Are we at this? Yeah, we're ready. We're here. Let's build. Sweet. And we're back over to the science ship. Haven't really found anything else of any significance over here, though. Just an anomaly so far. Quite an unfruitful journey this has been just Research yet. complete. So, one of our researches is completed. Let's slow down time and get something else. Ooh, a robot. Or we could get nuclear missiles. I'm going to go with robot because I've never seen that. So, we'll see what robots can do for us back home. And maybe one day we can train them to fight for us. And not against us, hopefully. So, some of our leaders have just got, gained skills from being around, I guess. A frozen world, a barren System frozen survey world. Complete. We're receiving found. a weak signal from the surface of this planet. The, sur the source appears to be some kind of tracking beacon. Alright, so that was like a pretty bad galaxy, I guess. Or, I keep calling them galaxies. A pretty bad system. But I'm most interested in this. There's a 5% fi failure risk, so let's get her cracking on that. She should be fine. And we can build another station over at Callisto. Of course, so basically like we can then go over to Alpha Centauri and start getting things there. But the problem is that we need to expand our territories if we want to build outside of our own borders. So eventually our little borders here aren't going to do... What the fuck is that? There's something flying through. Houston, we have a problem. Research complete. We've got some sort of military fleet with 78 manpower flying through our, our region of space. And our sensors have picked it up. Unidentified flying objects. Right, so we're just scanning that problem. That anomaly. Uh, let's see how Terra's doing, actually. I haven't really had a look at Terra in a while. So we've got a pop here, not doing anything. Let's just build what we should build. And that's a, a, a hydroponics lab, but we don't have the money for it right now. Oh, we can get physics. Whoops. Did I not click one? Oh, yeah. Okay, let's get... Uh, power plant 2, definitely. Or research speed. No, we'll go power plant 2. Come on. So I like playing at a slower speed just so I can kind of get everything I need to get done, especially in the early game. Ah, oh, Solar Sailor. We've discovered an abandoned Solar Sail ship in orbit around Hanum Tier 1. The sublight vessel was built by an unknown culture and appears to be several thousand years old. Whoa. One of the massive sails has a large tear where some kind of object passed through, and most likely a meteorite, which appeared to have disabled the vessel. Although the technology of the ship is severely outdated, it does possess some interesting in engineering design choices. Yeah, that's quite interesting. It doesn't seem like it would have worked in this galaxy. These emit extremely low amounts of light. Um, so it doesn't seem like you could actually harness that much from a solar panel. But what do I know, right? Um, okay, so we're kind of done with this place. We could... I guess we'll have a look over here. If one last anomaly. And then we'll move on to Barnard Star. 
Right, we're back at Saul. Saul good, man. And we've got one last thing to get in this whole place, I think. Let's check. Oh no, I think we have everything. Well, we don't have enough anyway to build anything right now. Let's go to Terra and on the surface put down some growth. Okay. So just to be sure, uh, yeah, Ganymede has something above it and so does Callisto, but Jupiter doesn't. So we can actually, we can put something above Jupiter, but it's gonna, we're gonna have to like obviously wait just a little bit before we can do that. Science ship. Just checking the time. Right, how's she doing? Right, let's speed things up. Ancient survey marker. A small short-range transmitter has been located on the surface of Hanum Tier 4. It appeared to be an ancient survey marker placed here eons ago to mark, uh, to mark a large deposit of precious metals. The miners it was meant for evidently never arrived as the deposit is still here. Oh, that was cool. We found a little extra deposit. So we didn't actually find it there in our initial survey, but we did later on. That's awesome. Sweet. It was worth it not leaving the system then, I guess. Right, but now we can, and we can head to Bernard Star. Our final system to survey within our kind of bounds of space. Um, so that's cool. We can, we can survey ones outside, but there's no real point until we can harvest everything within our own ones just yet. So here we are at Syracuse, we can build this final last bit of engineering. So this is a research station, it's different than the mining stations, it actually just researches the planet below it and that's what gives us the kind of engineering tech that we're going to get from this. Alright, let's speed things up and watch her, watch Julia Nepos find out what's going Construction on. Construction complete. Research complete. Research complete. That means we should assign a new one. Our colony ship is ready, uh, or it's been researched. Um, I'm going to go with leader lifespan and food 10%. That will increase our growth and allow us to colonize and grow planets much, much quicker, which is important. Syracuse is done. So Syracuse can now, finally, that it's finished with that, move off to... What do we need? Well, we're kind of low on power, so maybe we go to Hanum Tier first and build uh, a power station here. Four power from one planet is really, really good. Because the relative cost of doing that is quite low. And we're still exploring out here. System survey complete. Okay, this was the world. Okay, no, we did have something here. That was pretty much it. So now we're going to go outside the bounds of our own territory, essentially. We're not going into other enemy territory, at least. There's no bordering territories right now. But here we are. Let's go to survey Sirius. Not much going on here, but it is a... What kind of star is that? It doesn't quite tell me. These relatively young white or bluish white main sequence stars are typically among the most visible to the naked eye. They are large and rotate very quickly, but will eventually evolve into slower and cooler red giants. Interesting. Our sign ship is on the way. There we go. That's what I wanted to see. A class A star. Cool. This looks like a habitable world, is it? Mm, probably not. This definitely is though, for us. Alright, we're making good resources. I know it's a little bit slow to start off, but Trust me, it gets pretty hectic when you start getting into fights with the nations. And we are Roman, so we will expand. But our construction ship just has to build. So we'll wait for that to build and then we'll head over to Alpha Centauri and put down some more minerals. Mining station. Sweet. So you can see that like we're building up a good amount of system resources System survey now. complete. Oh, another system survey is complete. So let's venture out and survey another one. 
This one looks pretty interesting, actually, because it's got a purpose. Situation Okay, we need to slow time down, actually. We have encountered some form of alien vessel, vessel in the Har Haribas system. These strange objects have been flagged as alpha aliens until we can know more about them. We should proceed with caution. News of alien ships humming through the ether have reached Terra, in many ways ending the first chapter of the Book of the Roman Empire's bid for a stellar empire. Evading hostile fleet. Fuck. Ship Ptolemy has encountered a hostile alien vessels in Halibus, or Harabas, and is currently attempting to evade them. So it backed off out of here. Didn't didn't get to catch a glimpse of them. Just alien vessels. These are the type of things that are actually not no owned by a large race, but are generally just like alien vessels that chill out. They're kind of like NPCs that you can just find, um, and you'll have to take them out. So we can start gearing up our fleet to go kind of clear these guys out so that we can eventually go to these places without having to flee them. Uh, but for now we'll head to Mendok and have a look at this lovely little star. This large class B main sequence stars are very bright and blue. Although somewhat rare, the luminosity of these stars make them among the most visibly naked to the human eye. Whoa. It's pretty cool. Pretty damn cool. I love space. <laughs> Alright, so we're getting power from there. Well, yeah, we're doing pretty good. Construction ship is almost done. Let's start recruiting. So it's time I show you, I guess, the ship uh, designer. Uh, let's build a corvette and let's give it a, some sort of midsection, random midsection. Here we can put down red lasers. Uh, we can only have small sections for them though, so we'll, we'll be using like the small part. Now that's going to cost us 17 power to use, so we're going to have to put down some fission reactors to kind of counter that. And these will cost money when we put them down. So we only need two to go into the red in terms of power. Uh, we haven't researched anything else. Ooh, we do have ship mounted gravit uh, gravitic sensors, um, which will allow us to survey things quicker and spot things quicker. So sector range is, is a bit bigger for these. With a sign ship, obviously, we'll be able to survey faster. Um, so then if we call this Astati, um, that's done, and then what we can do is select Terra, go to the spaceport, build, and we have our Hastati class ship here that we just built. So let's build a couple of these bad boys, and when they're ready, we'll have a little zoom in look at them. They probably look same to what we have at the moment. Yeah, because we don't have many options at the moment, um, because I haven't researched that many. Um, but once you start kind of researching like different weapons and stuff, you can really get into deep customization with what you put on your ships and how you fight enemies. Um, so, this system is done. This one's been built. We're gonna need to figure out how to expand pretty soon. Uh, which is kind of a problem I have in the game, is like knowing how to expand. There's certain ways you can do it. You can expand by building a frontier, like a military frontier, but that will lower the amount of influence you have. That will cost you one influence per month, so we'll only be gaining two. Um, and you can then raise your influence by rivaling another faction. Um, but I don't really like doing that because it means that you're inviting war onto yourself. So I guess the only way to really expand is to anger other nations, which is an interesting design choice, I guess. You can um, just land on planets and like create second planets and homeworlds. Like this one here is habitable, uh, Sirius 3. Uh, also, if you can name that one in the comments, we can give that a new name too. So Sirius 3 is habitable, and so is a planet on Alpha Centauri. So when we land on this planet with a colony ship, we will extend our borders for free, essentially. So that's good. Um, it's just the military frontiers are the ones that cost. Anomaly found. Ooh, we found anomaly. An unusually deliberate geometric configuration of minerals drifts through the debris belt by this asteroid and is possibly of alien origin. We'll leave it be for now. There's only a 2% failure risk, so we'll get, that, we'll get to that pretty quickly. So we've got the minerals to build whatever we pretty much want. So let's get more, let's kind of harvest more engineering in this area. Construction complete. So our fleet has expanded a bit. Maybe we'll get some combat before the end of this episode. How about that? Um, oh, we need to research. Yeah. Is this habitable? Oh yeah, that, that is habitable. So we'll harvest the engineering on that. Uh, let's have a look at our fleet. Look at this. What a boss fleet. Five ships. 116 power. Um, we might need a bit more when we go into that other place. 
So let's recruit even more. Um, we'll speed things up now that we kind of know what we're doing for the next while. Wait for these ships to be constructed. Construction complete. There we go. Sun ship is plodding away through this uh, area, this galaxy, or this system. Absolutely nothing in the system, system survey either, complete. That was awful. All right, let's do this research. So it's been seven years since we first set out. Um, we'll probably end this end the video at maybe ten years. So our construction ship, nothing to do now either. It's built everything it can. Oh, actually no, it can build one more thing over here. So let's enter the orbit of this um, kind of mini moon. And Terra can build another ship. Just a legion of Hastati. Sign ship is still exploring. So we've Construction got, we'll complete. find out what this anomaly is now. Gilded cage. The mineral construct is, for lack of a better term, a room. Made out of the same type of minerals in common use in the Roman Empire, the construct is a hollow icon... Icosidecohedron. Uh, have fun saying that. Uh, <laughs> resonance scans indicate that it is mostly hollow and was likely inhabited at some point in time. Unlike its pristine exterior, the ex interior is a complete disarray. Possibly the result of an international act of sabotage. Science officer Julian Epos reports that this makes it difficult to learn anything of value from the construct's insides, but stresses that the engineering techniques involved in creating the outer shell, eminently capable of withstanding the stresses of deep space, must have been tremendously advanced. That is advanced. Alright, let's get out of this system. We're done. Mendoc. Um, we could do this one. It's right next to us. I kind of want to head down here, actually, instead. So we'll send her on our, on our way down to Prokai's... Poke Siren, or whatever. Our fleet, seven strong now. We could do with a little bit more, I think. And then we'll kind of have a quick exploration of that other planet and see if we can maybe even take on the fleet. Uh, we're going to have to pick a general. Construction complete. So let's see what their uh, things are. Mm, evasion, 15%. Yeah, let's go with evasion. That's pretty good. Uh, let's go with the guy. Easier to name. So we'll call this Admiral. Um, Lucius Agrippa. The old Roman names never die. So Lucius Agrippa has been assigned to this fleet. And he's gonna make a hell of a show of these guys that are next to our system. All right, one last ship. Maybe we'll get ten. It'll okay, take a couple of months more. No, we'll leave it at nine. Nine is fine. We don't Research need just ten for the sake of ten. Nine should be strong enough. It should get bring us up to two hundred manpower or firepower in general. Uh, research complete. Construction complete. Let's build deflectors. That'd be good for our ships. That's basically a shield for our ships. And here's our construction ships. So can't build anything for a while. We've got our fleet. Let's let's make way for the um, the Harabas system. Syracuse can build, and so they shall. Alright, here we go. The fleet are on board to Harabas. That's actually a warp trail right there. It could be from us though, I guess. Alright. This is intense. I have no idea what's like lying for me out here. I haven't seen the amount of them, but I'm sure it'd be fine. Anomaly ah, quite found. small. Wow, they're moving around though quite fast. Jeez, they're real fast. What the? Alien vessels. Okay, let's just change our stance and go for them. 
situation log encountered. We've encountered some, uh, some form of alien vessels in the Procyon system. These strange objects have been flagged as beta aliens until we know more about them. So, the interesting thing about this is if we open our situation log, we can actually directly just research these things now. So let's research and see what comes of it. Because we might be able to establish communication, which means we'll uncover a race. Hostile fleet engaged. Here we go, it's all kicking off. These guys are super fast. You can see the kind of like bar of who's gonna win this fight there, but they're they're about to be joined by another one. So this is actually gonna get a much tougher fight than I'd like it to be. Oh shit, these guys are coming now as well. We're after losing a ship. Uh, can we hold all three? I don't know. It's gonna be pretty close. Pretty close. It's gonna be a Pyrrhic victory, I think. Uh, we've got new engineering research as well in the meantime. Okay, we are winning. Lucius Agrippa is like kicking some serious ass. We've lost four ships though. I don't know what they are, there's like crystals essentially floating around. <laughs> Alright. Time project, we have a special time project, debris and habrius. So there's actually debris up here we can go collect. Anomaly, system surveyed. Situation log updated. Awesome, we just won. Updated. Crystalline entity prism. So we've completely wrecked them, um, but we've we've taken a huge amount of damage. So we're going to return. This system is now clear for my science ship to come in and start researching and scan, uh, which is good. There's an interesting little taste of combat there. Um, that's ba that's a basic combat, I guess, when it's just like not you don't really have to worry about what you're fighting. Um, but I'd like to find if there's like a habitable world like here. Um, in Yidiksa, because that would be a nice border expansion for us. And then we'll have to build a colony ship as well. So let's see, is there anything I actually need to build? Um, we can build in Bernard Star some more research, so let's send our construction ship up here. It's going to take them a while to get there though, so in the meantime on Terra we can start um, building things down here. So we can build a mining s network. Special project complete. Communications established with the Kopping Jaxi Kingdom. After successfully translating their language, we've established communications with the Kopping Jaxi Kingdom. Um, I'm just going to call them the Q Kingdom. Diplomatic channels are now open and all hostilities have been terminated. Okay, so if we find them, it'll just be like nicely. Hey, how's it going? Wow, they look awesome. Look at that. Um, I speak on behalf of the, con of the Q Kingdom and I bring you greetings. Our great leader, Emperor P is very pleased to have made contact with your unique species and we look forward to an exchange of culture and ideas. We all have much to gain from this encounter. That's what I'm gonna say. First alien encounter. The news that we have encountered intelligent alien life for the first time has been received with mixed feelings by our populace. This confirms what we had long suspected. We are not alone in this galaxy. Each new alien species we encounter represents both an opportunity and a threat. We must be wary. These particular Xenos have, have a level of technology similar to our own, indicating that we achieved spaceflight at roughly the same time. So I'm just going to slow things down a little bit while we figure this out. Um, got a nice power plant there. Okay, so let's build a mining network because we need more of that stuff. Um, we need to clear away something as well. There's nothing... We'll clear away some of this. This guy can build uh, another hydroponics farm. So they're they're fine now. Terra will be sorted for a good while. We can actually upgrade the energy on that planet as well. But now we should see. Here they are. Ah, they're they're the same size as me. The Copenjaxi Kingdom. 
It's a kingdom, actually. It's quite interesting. They actually have a king. I didn't know you could have a monarch. Um, so they just have one planet. That is small. We could totally take them down and occupy them if we ever needed to before they expand. But they have much more stars in their system. They have one, two, three, four, five. And it looks like maybe six. That's a hard one to tell. They have at least five, and we have one, two, three, four. So they have ac potentially, it depends what's on the place, of course, they have potentially access to more resources. But who knows? They could be a great ally as well. We'll have to see. So our fleet should be returning just now. Yeah, it's heading back. We just had a very big battle. Um, so they're kind of damaged. They're at 77% health. Uh, they will automatically heal at the spaceport. And as we research more and more, and we get those deflectors up on up and running, uh, we can we can kind of sh redesign our ships and uh, create new ones. Um, so I think that's going to be it for this Let's Play. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know, like I said at the beginning, what you think of like this Let's Play format. If you want to see more, I'm going to be doing one a day. Um, so I, I'll just do one every single day I see uh, the comments of the last one. So I'll try to work in your suggestions and things in the episode, but I might be a one episode delay before you actually see me kind of adjust to what you guys are saying. Um, and, and that's basically it. So we're going to leave off this campaign. Essentially, um, we'll just assign this guy to research and this guy to build over here will enter orbit so we'll save it there so we're, we're leaving off essentially with the discovery of alien life in a in the galaxy uh, there's one right next to us so there's bound to be m loads around the place um, and we've had a little battle so we've showed, you, showed you some combat um, some management of Terra and things like that so the Romans the Romans are doing quite well um, but they are very humble and small at the moment, so we don't want to be too ambitious and just wage war straight away. We've got to, got to consider our position. It's very much like the founding of Rome, I feel. We've got the Etruscans, you know, to our south. We've got to figure out what to do with them. Um, so that's pretty cool. Alright guys, uh, thanks for watching the video. Uh, let me know what you think. Like I said, I'll be streaming this on twitch.tv slash darntotalwar. If you want to have a right effect on the campaign as it's happening, let me know. We'll do that. Um, and if not, just tune in every day to see new episodes of this, and I'll get to some Total War videos uh, in future as Warhammer approaches. Um, Alright, so, see you next time!